Hi and welcome to Blender No To Go. The idea behind all these videos will be to basically get you skilled up in using ben Blender from having no knowledge whatsoever. So you can actually go find other tutorials online and get yourself working on some interesting projects for yourself. What I'm going to be doing is basically giving you a brief introduction to Vent Blender and running through a whole bunch of different projects. I'm designed to skill you up in various aspects. So the first thing we're going to look at is the actual 3D interface. As you can see here on the screen, we have this wonderful 3D view here. And then extended off to the left hand side, we have the transforms list at the top here, which is really this is a toolbar. It gives us all the options. A lot of the keyboard shortcuts don't make it necessary, so you don't need to go there, but it's there if you need it. First point of call is basically to get you started on the ideas of behind Blender and also to help you out if you get stuck. So the first thing you can know is the space bar. It brings up you up the search menu. It allows you to type in the name of any feature, um, such as move a target, move an add-on, and it gives you this nice long list that you can scroll through. To actually move an object, it is transform though. So we select transform. I can now move the location of the cube in the center. Now, when you select stuff and start to manipulate stuff, you'll notice straight up the bat, off the bat, a slight difference compared to any other program you've used. If you use a right click, you can select an object. If you use a left click, this little 3D cursor here moves. So that is an instant change that you takes a little bit of getting used to. But once you're there, it's fine. The next thing is I'm going to move this cube basically with the grab key. I'm going to slide it a little bit in a direction. Now at the moment I can move it in any direction after hitting the G. Uh, if I do X, I lock it into the X plane. So back and forth, as you can see here. And this, the angle it moves depends on which way you look at it. The Y direction, left and right. And the Z direction, up and down. Or I can grab one of those little arrows and slide it the mount. If I want to be very precise, I can grab that arrow or press the keyboard combinations and hold down Shift. It gives me a lot finer control. If I actually do the same, grab let's go Y because it's easier, hold down control, it moves it, snapping it to the grid divisions. So in this case, depending, because I'm at this resolution, I can snap it to basically one little blender unit in the space. Everything's done in blender units, but you can change that if you're doing things like 3D printing or other things that require a defined distance. Now, that covers the mouse keyboard buttons the mouse, the G key. The other one you want to be aware of is the middle mouse button. So if I click that, I can rotate my view, moving up and down, left and right, so that I can position my view and it basically rotates or tracks around my object. And this makes life easier. To have a little more precision over what you're doing, and this is as defined up here, a user perspective, user perspective. I can also switch to things like in a top view with a 7 on the number pad, a front view or a side view. This makes it easy to manipulate things. So I've got my cube in the center and I'm just going to build a brick wall. The easiest way to do that is I'm going to slide this little one sideways. I'm going to add a cube. Now add is shift A as you've seen on the sidebar there and I'm adding a mesh cube. Done. What it's just done is added it to where the 3D cursor is, as you can see here. So I'm going to slide that up a little so it sits roughly on the same height and position the two next to each other using the middle mouse button just to basically get the positioning right to line them up. At the moment I have a perspective view, so if I actually grab this cube and slide it a long way away, rotate round, you can see the size difference there. 
Another keyboard that's useful is the number 5 on the keypad, which gives you what they refer to as an orthographic view, which basically, no matter how far it is away, it looks the same size. It's always treated as the same size and doesn't do the perspective stuff that you expect to see in a distance. What I've just done there is I'm repositioning the cube so it's close to the center and rolled the mouse button in and out to basically zoom in and out. Now if I go off into somewhere completely random, I think it is Alt C, nope, Control C, no, and Shift C. There it is. Shift C gets you back to where your position is. Now if I don't like what I've just done, say I've selected this cube and done something silly with it, I can undo it with this, the classic Control Z. If I've grabbed it and I got it over here, I can right click to ignore what I've just done, or I can left click to place it. Now I'm just going to duplicate some cubes and build a wall. So looking from above, I'm going to duplicate this cube with a Shift D and slide it straight down. Duplicate it again, and a third time. And this is the quick easy way to build a wall. Now I want to select all five cubes, holding down Shift, I just basically right click on all five, and Shift D to duplicate, move it in the Z direction, slides up and then slide it in the Y direction so it's offset, and that last one on the end I don't want, so I'm going to delete it, I can press either the delete key, or the letter X. Now that's not confirmed as yet, I've got to click the delete on this little pop-up menu, with the left click, and it goes away. If I don't like the pop-up menu and what it's given me the option to, I just move the mouse off it and it disappears. So for example, if I create a new document with a control N for new, it says, do you want to reload the start file? In this case, no. So I slide off it. Done. Now, just to finish off my brick wall here, I'm going to duplicate another set of cubes, lock it to the X, Z direction and slide them straight up. And now I have a wall of cubes that's three high and started with five wide. The final bit of this is I need to render what I've created. So I'm going to press zero on the number pad and look through it. This gives me my camera view. Holding down the F12, you can see there's my pile of cubes. To actually get this rendered scene to work, you'll need three things. Something to photograph, a camera to photograph it with, and that's what the camera looks like, and a light source. Without the light source, there's no light to bounce around to see what you're looking at. Without a camera, there's nothing to render from, and then, yeah, you need something to render. If we look at the other menus around the screen just quickly, yes, I talked about the 3D view, which is what I predominantly work within. We have this little one out here, which is called the outliner, which gives me a list of all the objects in the scene. So if I look, I've got cube, one, cube 001, cube 007, cube 111, a lamp, which is my light, and if I click on it, you can see it's just highlighted over here. And finally the camera, there, done. It also has some world settings and some render layers, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. Then, below that, we have what's known as the properties menu. So I'll just, between these two things, slide it out a little bit. Here I have the render scenes. And so this I can render a single shot, an animation, deal with audio. I can do various render presets. So this is basically sizes of renders that I'm going to do. Oops. And it gives me the dimension, you know, X and Y, which is your height and width, and that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm going to skip over most of the rest because they're not relevant at this point. Then we have the output. And this is what the file type you're going to end up with. Dumps it into a temporary folder in this case and it produces a PNG file. I can set it to movie files, um, but it's, you, yeah, depending on what I want to produce. So, whoops. And I can also have, so if I wanted to produce, well, doing a wall with, as a movie file is going to be really boring, but we'll, later on we'll actually do a very simple animation and we'll animate, render it out and make it a short film. So here you can see, basically, this is a quick and easy introduction to Blender. The keyboard shortcuts we've covered are the grab tool, or G for grab, which transforms or allows you to move things around. That can be locked into the X, Y, or Z planes, 
which are basically just directions. You have the 1, 3 and 7 on the number pad, which give you the top or the, the front, top and side views. You also have the number 5, which allows you to switch between perspective view and orthographic view, depending on what you're working on. Usually when doing modeling, it's easy to work in orthographic view. And then finally, when you're looking at your final scene and see how it's all assembled, you'd want to be working in perspective. Um, what else have we touched on? Shift C. So in case you lose everything and don't know what's going on or where it is, Shift C will basically center you on your scene. And then of course there's the mouse buttons. Right click allows you to select objects, left click allows you to move the 3D cursor, and the middle click allows you to rotate around what you're looking at. Um, and that's pretty much a summary of what we've touched on today. Thank you.